Hi, and welcome to this presentation about our project Barcodes for Benefits. We are a team assemblage and would like to tell you a little bit more about our idea. Our hope is to fight poverty by looking at the issue from a little bit different angle. There are a few fundamental things that we believe when it comes to choices and poverty. Well, first up, we don't believe it's a choice to start with. There is simply not a well-illuminated fork in the road with obvious choices. Left or right, rich or poor. If that were the case, we probably wouldn't have this conversation to start with. We also believe that many individuals have to choose between work and family. Soaring cost of childcare makes it hard to work full time, which means less income, a lose-lose situation. This shouldn't have to be a choice. Further, for many people education and investing in human capital is not a choice they can afford to make short term. This should be a choice. So. What is our solution to all of this then? At Barcodes for Benefits, we want to give people the necessary toolbox and support systems to get out of poverty by being able to take long-term decisions rather than short-term ones that usually keeps you stuck in a quicksand of poverty. Let us tell you a bit more about what we want to achieve. Our idea is to build a platform for communities to promote these long-term decisions and at the same time remove stigmatizing of poverty as only a result of one's choices. It starts with our belief in research and science. By rewarding our participants for studies have shown your quality of life and future opportunities increases the most. These rewards are unfortunately those most hard to come by for many families and individuals. Healthy and nutritious food, access to health care and education. This is where Barcodes for Benefits comes in. By making these choices more available, we instead hope to start an upward spiral of events. We want to build an ecosystem where the community will be engaged in the challenge. It takes efforts from everyone, not only the local or federal government, and not only those experiencing hardship. By creating a living network, we hope to reconnect those in need with the means to improve their situation. Instead of unintentionally penalizing actions that lead to a path away from poverty, we incentivize these actions. We rather use the carrot than the stick. Especially when the stick many times is used to deter from taking the right path. Simply put, it can be seen as any rewards program where actions leads to points that can be redeemed for rewards. The only difference is that the rewards are tailored to help families and individuals in need. Examples of actions are attending resume writing seminars, applying for jobs, volunteering at soup kitchens. Examples of rewards are coupons for healthy food at supermarkets, doctor's appointments, and school materials for one's kids. By empowering people to have the chance to take control of their life, we are confident the right paths will open up. Ultimately, this will benefit both the individuals that make up our community, as well as the community itself. Together, we all win. Thank you for watching, and now we would like to get into some more details about our project. On this slide, Data USA is listing the Tampa, St. Petersburg, and Clearwater, Florida poverty rate at 14.6%. This slide shows us more specific data pertaining to St. Petersburg, and they're listing the poverty rate at 15.9%. Our source, Data USA, also states how households in St. Petersburg have a median annual income of $55,000, which is less than the median annual income of $60,000 across the entire United States. 
the following charts show us that white females from the ages of 25 to 34 are the largest demographic in St. Petersburg who are living in poverty. Again, our source here is Data USA. A few stakeholders include the local government, local non-governmental organizations, community-based organizations, and community-based organizations and membership organizations representing PRS target populations, which include women and youth. More specific stakeholders include educational centers, such as certification and testing centers, and local community colleges, such as St. Petersburg College, art centers, such as the Public Art Project, and the Public Art Project is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization that facilitates public art through a variety of methods by working directly with artists, business owners, organizations, and local governments. We also have specific contacts that we can leverage, such as Amy Foster, a St. Petersburg City Councilwoman, and a type of center for poverty, such as the Florida Dream Center. The Florida Dream Center has a monthly workforce readiness training program that helps those in need with resume building, job skills training, and work placement. The barcodes for benefit stakeholders would work together in unison and independently, and they would kind of work in a format exemplified by this organizational chart. So there are three or four basic parts of this chart. In the center, we have leading, directing, controlling, planning, organizing, and staffing. We also have top management, middle management, frontline management. And on the other side, we have administrative support staff, technical support staff, and the technical core staff, all of which will contribute to having inputs, transformational processes, and outputs. We believe that these points summarize our unique value proposition. The barcode for benefits program is going to be a simple, tangible tracking system that is not intrusive to people's lives. Also, it's going to be gifted with access via internet to participants' portal in order to track their progress. A mentorship and guidance throughout the program will take place. Also, it will have a job portal specific to their skill sets and the area in which one is applying. Because we think in the long-term uh, fact, we believe that educational certificate program via trade and technical school to offer required foundation, it's really important. And at last but not least, a retention program earning points for good behaviors and actions, and actions taken with a redeemable benefits for healthy, tangible lifestyle choices will make this program highly demanded. Against poverty has been a great issue when it comes to economic development. We just need to see this data to realize that there is a growing need of resources to enable individuals who are fighting poverty to find the correct course of action to improve their lives in a positive direction. This is why we believe that our barcode for benefits program will alleviate these numbers and greatly minimize the effects of poverty in the greater Tampa Bay area and contribute positively to the economic development. Our motto is influenced by the user and producer innovation concept, crowdsourcing, open innovation, wisdom of crowds, and Jugar. We provide the community with a platform for self-help when it comes to the learning and job applying with wide array of tools. We believe that this program allows people to solve their own needs. Better opportunities, better jobs, better payment would lead to more spending power and raising up the cash flow of businesses in St. Petersburg. People who make more money will be able to pay more tax and that goes back to the local government. Ultimately, this allows the community living in poverty and surrounding communities to thrive together. From here, we can gather more information about which factors help people successfully find jobs and how to better help them. That is the only beginning of Barcode for Benefits. The path Barcode for Benefits take in the long run is up to, com to the community rather than us. And furthermore, 
more explanations about um, how the program works will be explained in the next slide. The program creator and sponsors are responsible to kickstart the program by forming partnerships with grocery stores for healthy food, gyms, bookstores, health clinics, as well as providing the facilities, including computers used for job search and classrooms with teachers explaining how to write a resume and how to be successful in an interview and more. If that wasn't enough, the redeeming aspect of the program gives incentives for people to join the program and enjoy even more benefits from the previously mentioned partnerships. This is also a great opportunity for the poverty community to get together in a cohesive and supportive setting to make friends support each other in a common goal that is to escape poverty. Alumni and en enrollees can also take this chance to take charge of the program directions and decide how to make the program more helpful to them because they understand best their problems and needs. Of course, there will be admins and moderators to keep check of the validity of the conclusions of these meetings. From there, third parties and key partners can use this data collected from the program either to better their services and or better help the poverty community. We realize that the marketing of the program can be crucial and word of mouth is definitely a cost saving and effective way to spread the program. There's no better way to encourage participation than testimonies. The implementation timeline here is what we anticipate how long it will take our plan to be executed. In January 2020, market research will be complete and it will include statistics, data, and a thorough analysis of poverty in Florida. In February 2020, and after market research, a business model should be created during this stage. During this phase, we will create surveys and analyze the results. In March of 2020, and utilizing proper resources, the business model should be reviewed by the team and tweaked to fit the customer's needs and wants. We will get in contact with stakeholders and review business model with the team. Finances will be reviewed during this time, and the solution will then be presented to the city. In April 2020, the website design should be completed during this phase. This includes the design and testing. In May of 2020, IoT System Solution 1 will be created. This will include a barcode scanner and barcode to go along with the scanner. In June of 2020, we will review both of April and May tasks to analyze what is working and not working. At this time, we will continue to work with city officials to reach out to all the households that are suffering from poverty. In July of 2020, and after a thorough review, the website will launch. We will utilize this time to decide on what exactly to tweak for the website and find ways to gain traction. Names should be entered into the system. In August of 2020, the barcode system will be tested during this phase. Names should be entered into the system at this time. In September 2020, we will get in contact with city officials and present the word to them. In October 2020, there will be a beta launch. In November 2020, this will be a review month, which includes meeting with city officials. Last minute tweaks will also take place during this month. We anticipate the final launch will take place on December 1st, 2020. So now that we have you thinking, Let's recap everything we have discussed. The poverty epidemic has been a subject of interest since the early days of American history. Although there has been an upward trend in the solution to fight poverty, it is necessary to continue to strive to build a system that could wipe out poverty once and for all. Considering that we have continued to make progress on poverty, it is estimated that the average for poverty in St. Petersburg, Florida is less than the average for the state of Florida. Considering the numbers, we are creating a redemption program to fight poverty. By creating a redemption program, individuals who are suffering from poverty will be tempted to seek employment of which can help them progress with their everyday lives. The idea here is to implement a barcode system that will allow individuals to redeem points based on work-related tasks such as applying to jobs or attending a seminar and how to write a resume. Based on the results, individuals can redeem the points that they earn on groceries, gyms, books, and insurance for selected providers. Our end goal here is to create a system that will enable individuals to seek work while rewarding them. Now that we have shared our idea, we hope to see you join us on our journey to fight poverty.